Hi everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the NAND Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about VMware vSphere Plus and vSAN Plus overview. So here is the agenda. What are the customer challenges of IT service industry? And what is the subscription market overview? And what are the workloads? And what is the best example for the pay as you go or consumption model? And how to save CapEx with an as a service or consumption model? And what are the advantages of on-prem and private cloud infrastructure? And what are the additional considerations for all workloads? What are the benefits of public cloud? And what is the VMware evolution? What is the VMware vision? And what if you if we could have a cloud benefits on-prem? And finally, VMware vSphere Plus and vSAN Plus solution overview. In order to understand the vSphere Plus vSAN solution overview, we required all these basic concepts. All these foundational topics, once we are understand, then it's easy to understand the actual solution overview and finally we can close the session with vSphere plus frequently asked questions FAQs okay so let's start with the first question what are the customer challenges of the IT service industry so here are the based on the customer feedback so the most common customer challenges I'm going to highlight now the first common customer challenge is inflexible consumption Inflexible is nothing but a fixed consumption. And CapEx purchases, CapEx means capital expenditure, purchases may be harder to justify and align with the business and more difficult to respond quickly to changing the demands and license key management is hassle. He is a hassle. Okay, this is the main uh, challenging for the customer. The reason is the capex purchases. That means capital expenditures. Suppose when we're going to start a new project, initial during the initial stage itself, based on our project requirement, we need to buy a so much hardware, server equipment, network equipment, storage equipments, and so on. The initial investment we call it as a capital expenditure. That is the it's a fixed consumption only. That is also one challenge when we have a conversations with customer. They always keep uh, keep highlighting this point cap capex purchases. Okay, and another challenge is sluggish innovation that means it's a slow innovation application development and time to market is too slow and shortage of skills and talent in the cloud native methods such as kubernetes and new apps fail to meet day two day two we already familiar in our previous session i explained about the day two day two means our main operations and security complaints or scalability needs. These are all the very challenging when we have a existing environment or for a new project perspective. And another customer challenge is fragmented infrastructure. Fragmented means split infrastructure. That means poor visibility and control access different geo. Geo means geographical. Suppose if our organization is a multinational company, we have uh, so many multiple geo locations. Like we have some offices in APAC region, some offices in a EMA region. So that scenario, we do not have a full picture or control on all the sites. Uh, every site we must have a separate infrastructure. So and uh, not only for geo, even for the cloud and edge locations. That means there is no centralized console to verify the our all the geo infrastructure and the lack of confidence that security gaps have been addressed everywhere. So every location we have to address the some security gaps and routine infrastructure maintenance is too costly and disruptive. So wherever we have the geolocation, the IT infrastructure, there will be a maintenance cost. So maintenance cost is too costly and also the disturb. There will be a, when we are doing any performing a, any maintenance on one level of infrastructure, like uh, network infrastructure, if you are doing some maintenance, there is a chances of disturbing the server infrastructure and interruptions on the storage A level. Okay, so this is the most common feedbacks customers are given. So how we going to address the solutions we're going to discuss today. That is only the vSphere Plus and vSAN Plus. 
okay previously we talk about the vSphere but recently vmware launched a new solution the solution name vSphere plus and vSAN plus virtual sun plus but before uh, deep dive into the solution concept uh, we have to understand some main key concepts another question is what is the subscription market overview we need to familiarize this subscription model okay because nowadays uh, most of the clouds are running in a subscription based models only licenses are subscription based okay so subscription market overview based on the idc research this is a uh, research analysis result only it's publicly available from the idc website so subscription market overview operational efficiency remains a priority as well so operational efficiency means flexibility and uh, effective if you want to maintain all our it infrastructure operations it remains a priority and uh, based on the idc research 61 percent of enterprises agree that their strategy is to aggressively shift to consumption driven purchasing models so consumption driven we can also call it as subscription so most of the organization instead of going for a capex model they are going for a consumption driven purchasing models this is according to the digital infrastructure subscriptions are a priority in 2001 the research result was delivered to public on march 2021 and another key point from the research analysis is 59 percent of enterprises are reducing the time effort required to manage their technology investment even technology investments also they are already reducing when they move to the subscription based model or consumption driven purchases okay this is the survey result and also there another key point is by 2025 year 2025 the number of enterprises that means 60 percent of enterprises that will fund lob line of business and it projects through opex budgets that means in order to address the capex customer challenge now they all the customers are most of as per the survey results 60 percent of customers are enterprise customers are they are ready to invest on a opex budgets opex means operational expenditure budgets so idc features cape worldwide feature of digital infrastructure 2022 predictions are october 2021 actually these predictions are released uh, in a october 2021 okay so they, based on this survey result in future most of the organizations are keep moving from a instead of capa, capex expenditure they trying to allocate their budget on a opex model okay opex model means it's a kind of consumption model or subscription model just for our easy understanding suppose uh, in our home uh, home if you need a power water or gas or any of the home utilities uh, the best example is power water suppose if you need a power we no need to buy a power equipment we no need to uh, buy a transformer power grids we are just taking the power from a nearby thermal stations and utilizing the power and we are paying only for the usage bills same way it infrastructure also most of the it organization in future all the private clouds and on premises are based on their requirement within their infrastructure 60 percent of organization structure will be moving to the consumption model consumption model means they do not have their own server data center they do not have their own it equipment they are just started utilizing from the cloud so that means they will pay only for the usage like how we are paying for a power usage how we are paying for a water usage so same like utility bills based on our usage only we can play to the paying the uh, amount to the cloud vendors we can also say csp cloud service providers okay that is the what this subscription market overview so this is the based on the uh, analysis or research analysis only now let's talk about the what are the workloads we are always keep on saying workloads workloads is the our these days common terminology we are using a workload so let's try to understand what is importance of workload so what are the workload means the term workload is often used in discussions in the design operation troubleshooting of an 
environment whether it be a private private workload public workload or a hybrid cloud workload must skim over the meaning of term without having a clear understanding what it is so we have to understand what is the actual meaning of workload so i am trying to explain the actual importance of workload now so in general the normal general uh, definition of workload is is the amount of work performed or capable of being performed with a specific period that is a workload the name itself workload is the amount of work performed this is a general english meaning suppose in the computing world workload is means it's not like a amount of work it's slightly different in computing world we can call a workload typically is any program or application that runs on any computer or device that is nothing but a workload so in other words a workload is a collection of resources and code that delivers business value such as customer facing facing application or a back end process so whenever we say workload means that is a, any program or application that can be run on a virtual machine it can run on a container it can run on a bare metal and so on okay that is importance of workload okay and another meaning of workload in a cloud environment is a cloud workload is an application service capability or a specified amount of work that consumes cloud based resources such as computing or memory power that makes vms databases even database also consider as a workload and container also consider as a workload so whenever we we keep uh, hearing or listening or reading the word workload so this is the meaning of actual workload so microservices hadoop nodes and applications all consider cloud workloads okay even in the top 10 server workloads are these are all the top 10 server workloads but most of the it infrastructure the majority of workloads are consumed by server virtualization that means virtual machines and the database also consider as a workload and business applications web applications e-commerce test and development business intelligence analysis virtual desktop vdi virtual desktop infrastructure also consider as a workload and collaboration apps and big data analytics cloud native applications so these all consider as a workloads now let's try to understand uh, what is the best example for the pay as you go or consumption model now okay so this way is also one of the common familiar word pay as you go most of the public clouds are working in a pay as you go model whatever the usage you are using for your cloud aws machines aws ec2 instances or azure virtual machines or google virtual machines whatever the usage you are using based on your usage only we are paying the bills okay that pay as you go model the another name is consumption model or we can also say subscription model based on your subscription we can pay the bill okay so let's uh, i'm trying to give one example for the pay as you go model what is the best example for the pay as you go or consumption model so i took this example to cover infrastructure cloud private cloud all the layers this example will cover let's say hp green lake platform brings to cloud to you faster here you means customer so it will brings the cloud to the customers very faster and the first initial step is we have to choose services for your workloads here they already we started using the name workloads for your workload means vm container bare metal devices or any applications okay business related applications for your workloads in just a few clicks so we have we can deploy the that much fast just uh, you can uh, subscribe for a hp green lake platform choose and the order will be delivered within a 14 days so arrival in as little as 14 days so they will uh, our hp green lake experts will install and configure on site so we no need to do anything our hp will help us to do all the install and configurations and then we can launch with a minutes of connecting to the network once the servers are delivered and connected and once we establish the network it starts simplifying the all the application provisioning so that is the reason it's considered as a simplified it for users suppose in this scenario before a green lake model 
if you want to buy a physical server na even if you want to buy a physical 10 servers also we have to wait few months time but that scenario is now changed due to this consumption or pay as you go model when you subscribe for a hp green lake platform usually with once you choose and select the specific workload with based on your order it will deliver to your data center within 14 days that data center can be a on premises or private cloud and install and configuration also we no need to worry hp experts will do the all the installation and configure and we have to connect to only to our network devices so that you can start set up in your virtual machine container and applications okay and also another key thing is if you want to verify what is our building structure and all this building structure is mainly to use the hpe green lake cloud services based on our subscription this cloud services point and click experience grow over time so based on your usage only billing will started and the pay for what you use so and but this management of green lake cloud service and all it will be managed for us so even if your customer want a green lake cloud services the hp team will help us to do to provide all the cloud services and also billing also can provided using hpe green lake central okay that is importance of hpe green lake so this green lake also it covers the our hardware infrastructure like server storage network equipment and it will also cover the cloud services so completely once one once we subscribe to the green lake model everything will be in our uh, just few clicks away only okay and the monthly charges and all we can pay only for based on our usage as similar as how we are doing for a public cloud aws azure and also the other third party clouds okay this is the one example pay as you go model and now let's talk about how to save capex with an consumption model so we just observe the consumption model but with this consumption model and usually this consumption model why it become popular is suppose in the previous before consumption model if you need a 10 physical servers we need to buy the 10 physical server hardware our own hardware only the initial capital expenditure is very high the 10 servers we need to invest a lot of uh, initial amount and also we need to include for a five years licensing maintenance and licensing support that means in case of any hardware issues our specific hardware vendor will provide the support but the initial capital expenditure for 10 physical servers also it's a huge amount and even server delivery may take months time and we have to set up manually and co configure the installation and configure but that same traditional model now change it to the pay as you go model so that model only uh, hpe they started the naming convention as hpe green lake platform when you start subscribing for a hpe green lake platform what they will do is they will send our devices within 14 days so arrival will be as fast as as little as 14 days once the servers or equipment delivered to our data center we no need to worry about the initial configuration all the installation and configuration also taken care by the hpe experts and then how about the billing process the billing process will be instead of putting a capital expenditure we are not paying anything the initial we are just paying only for the consumption model consumption model means let's say the server is started from there we started launching the servers from a july 1st and the next bill cycle will be start from uh, the billing will be on the until july 1st to july month end and the bill we have to pay by august so monthly cycle within this month what is our hardware utilization let's say our hardware cpu memory disk and all we will not utilize complete 100 percent we will utilize only the max 40 to 60 percent usage let's say a few servers will be 30 percent cpu 32 30 percent memory and so on few servers maybe the critical servers may consume more than 50 percent like 60 or 70 percent whatever the usage you used from our servers i took the example as 10 physical server even if you have hundreds of servers or thousands of servers also same process is applicable so whatever the servers you have that servers 
they will calculate using green lake central they will monitor your servers usage and that usage bill it will comes after the month so monthly basis we have to pay what is our consumption based on the consumption we can pay the bill so this consumption may be one month may be slightly up and next month will be slightly down same like our home uh, current power bills. So power bills also, we will not get a unique bill for every month. Uh, sometimes it may be bill may be high, sometimes uh, power bill may be low. Same way for server infrastructure model as well. Not only server, the complete data center infrastructure, we have to pay based on our usage only. Okay, that is the importance of this example. Now, with this benefit, what is a, a end result or uh, what is our uh, main primary benefit to the customer is their initial capital and expenditure is reduced so we no need to invest additional capital amount during the uh, servers purchase we only just pay for a whatever usage we use okay once you let's say your target is for project uh, turnover is uh, five years once five years is finished these servers will be delivered to the hp hp will take care of all the dismounting and taking to the their data center okay so that is importance of pay as you go or consumption model same way even in the public cloud also aws azure and google cloud also when you create deploying a multiple virtual machine all those virtual machines we can pay only for the based on your usage bill only if you are not using much better to keep our virtual machines in a power up so that you, uh, there will be no usage consumption bills same way like our private cloud and uh, private cloud infrastructure using hp green lake platform as well okay so hope you understand this point now let's go to the another important point is how to save capex with an as a service aas means as a service or consumption model so just know what we discussed the same one i'm trying to explain using this graph let's say this purple line refers as a storage or compute capacity needed and invoiced so this is our actual capacity needed capacity and we are paying the bills this way because sometimes there may be the scale is up sometimes the scale is down so scale up scale down is common in the invoice but in the traditional model suppose if you compare with the traditional model based on your server infrastructure size if you require 100 vms we need to buy minimally 10 physical servers that traditional model our investment is slightly higher than your actual consumption model and also within our traditional we should also maintain a some buffer usage same like a buffer even we can also use within the consumption model even consumption model also if you want to keep your buffer node also we can keep the buffer node in our data center but even though still if you compare with the traditional and consumption model definitely 53 percent of companies over provision storage 10 to 25 percent in up upfront purchases this is as per the survey digital infrastructure survey results okay and also the savings when you compare with the traditional and on-premises consumption model always there will be a saving so this amount is a purple line is our actual usage and orange color line is refers as a traditional investment but there is a so much saving and even in the during the buffer scenario also there will be some saving so capacity ahead of demand and maintain a safe buffer of capacity so sometimes we always keep it as a buffer nodes also for safety purpose and even if you keep a buffer nodes also definitely there will be a saving and over one third report they have either run out of storage capacity or hit utilization rates so high as the importance performance so even the performance also we will get a better performance when you are using a consumption model okay and reserve level even if you want to keep a reserve reserve also we can keep a few reserve nodes also just for safety purpose but reserve level billing also not higher than the traditional okay now let's understand what are the advantages of on prem or private cloud infrastructure so until now we talk about what is workload and what is a consumption model and uh, now i'm going to explain you what are the advantages of on-prem or private cloud infrastructure let's say the main exam main advantages of on-prem and private clouds are the one key 
is data confident confidentiality so that means data confidentiality means if our data center is on prem on prem means our own office private cloud also it's like a private data center it's within our control only so data will be confidential it will not be uh, open for a public so data confidentiality and another advantage is data security even security will be high we can maintain the data security with uh, kms or key management system or multi factor authentication or any of the mechanisms we can use when the servers and data will be within our on premises okay and another thing is high performance even data is within our data center means obviously while accessing the performance will be high performance that means better utilization we can use and there will be no uh, bottlenecks in our storage and network level and another is predictable cost so based on our usage only we can predict the how much the cost we can get even within the on premises we can we came to know capital expenditure when you go for a consumption model also our cost will be predictable specifically to the public cloud infrastructure and another benefit is low latency so the, always there will be a low latency only and another thing is data control even data also within our control okay that is importance of on prem and private cloud infrastructure now let's talk about what are the additional considerations for all workloads so again we are using the word all workloads so the main thing is one key point here is vmware vsphere remains the industry leading compute virtualization platform now let's understand other workloads customer purchasing characteristics so customers purchasing model is keep changing normally earlier they used to buy now once it is buy it's our own perpetual purchase that means perpetual is nothing but a permanent purchase often capitalized and depreciated over time annual support and maintenance payment it's like a five years contract and also we will have to pay the actual permanent purchase like uh, five years our servers will be in our data center our own hardware okay and another model now we are going to discuss is its kind of rent so term based subscription often funded via apex buckets apex means operational budget operational expenditure buckets and support for the duration of the term so suppose if you used for one month that one month bill we have to pay normally suppose if you are doing any of the project for a three months or six months less than a year or less than three years during that scenario if you are investing on a per perpetual purchase like a capital expenditure on uh, multiple hardware it will be like a huge investment for our project so during that scenario the best method is we'll go for a term based subscription that is a recommended method we have two methods so any of the method customers can choose now and workloads go growing everywhere so workloads means any application or program can run on a computer or device so it can be a virtual machine bare metal or it can be a container device okay so these and all not only on premises these days if you see the workloads are running on private cloud on premises hybrid cloud and so on so uh, just an example we have a multiple virtual machine on premises and this can be migrated to the public and refactor those application and repatriate and reasons for some workloads stay on premises is economics and technical complexities and regulatory compliance based on our organization or customer organization security regulations they will keep few applications still on on premises only but whatever the uh, less critical machines and all they can move it to the public like aws azure and google cloud so depends on the customer's choice they can run their workload everywhere and workloads also growing everywhere now let's try to understand what are the benefits of public cloud why the customers are moving to public cloud and previously we understand consumption model the consumption model benefit is when you compare with a traditional model in consumption model there will be a huge uh, cost will be reduced that's the reason obviously the organization who are using on premises or private cloud they will move it to a moving to a consumption based model or subscription based models but uh, what is the benefit of public cloud public cloud also also have a similar kind of benefits let me explain you the what are the benefits of public cloud see within the public cloud the main key benefits are 
access from anywhere so public cloud means we just a simple web access url aws cloud url or uh, azure cloud url or similarly to google cloud that url you can sit from access from any of the geo location you can access from india you can access from us uk and so on any of the locations we can access and minimal maintenance normally in our traditional data center if you have a hardware all the hardware bias update firmware update OS upgrade, these and all our responsibility. But when you are using a public cloud, hardware infrastructure is not managed by customer, it's managed by a specific cloud vendor. Suppose if your, your cloud machine is a, belongs to Azure, that means Microsoft will take care of their hardware. We no need to bother of hardware. That is the reason we consider as a minimal maintenance and hyperscaling hyperscaling is nothing but a if you want to increase your workload suppose if you need a hundred virtual machine in our on premises or private cloud infrastructure if you want to plan for a bulk deployment definitely there will be a slow process we have to order the few physical servers we need to order for a deployment and we need to plan des design we have to design implement and also do the operations but when it comes to the public cloud environment even if you want to start a new project or any of the new requirement if you want to provision a n number of virtual machines n number of aws instances within few clicks we can able to deploy that is called hyperscaling for bulk provisionings and another thing is built-in resilience so built-in resilience is nothing but a yeah, flexibility so by default in the public cloud we have flexibility even if you need a, a few virtual machines for your us branch you can provision the us branch if you need a, some other few virtual machines from uk branch you can provision australia branch also required for few vms you can provision suppose if you want your on premises level only thing is we need to deploy a physical hardware you need a data center space and all that there is no much flexibility when you are using a on premise but when it comes to public cloud it's always flexibility built in flexibility in other words, built-in resilience. And another advantage is developer agility. Even developer also can easy to run their code on on-premises and can easily run on public cloud. And another benefit is flexible consumption. Even building process also, it's a consumption model only. So now we started familiaring with the workload technology, subscription or consumption model. Okay, now let's try to understand the another fundamental topic is what is the VMware evolution? So VMware evolution is like a, it's a started with a vSphere virtual infrastructure. Let's say this version is version one. VMware initially it started with a vSphere only. Within the vSphere product, we have main thing is ESXi and vCenter. To manage multiple ESXi hosts, we need a vCenter server. And later on, VMware evaluated means it's a developed. It's a developed with a second version, version two. They improved to the software defined data center in short form STDC. The importance of software defined data center is mainly four key components. Apart from vSphere, they also started introducing the virtualization on network layer, network virtualization or network hypervisor that is called NSX. Now the latest NSX product is NSXT transformers. And even similar to server virtualization, vSphere, network virtualization, NSX, and storage also, they enhance the virtualization software that is called vSAN, virtual SAN. And to in order to automate your compute virtualization, network virtualization, storage virtualization, they introduced another component called vRealize suit. Within the vRealize, we have multiple products. For automation, we use vRealize automation tool. And for the, if you want to do a monitoring, we can use vRealize operations manager. For log, centralized log monitoring, we can use vRealize log insight tool. So like that, we can use vRealize. And again, they enhanced their version two to version three. So within the version three, they changed the name to hybrid cloud platform. That is how VMware is keep evaluating their versions. And within the version three, they have VMware cloud. It is powering hybrid IT organizations. What they did is within the virtual cloud network, they introduced uh, integration to the IBM cloud, integration to the Google, integration to Azure, AWS, and also integration to the private cloud, which is using VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation. And also you can implement the VCF on edge locations. And this AWS, Azure and all, we 
consider like a, the tool name is VMC on AWS, VMware Cloud on AWS. That is a hybrid cloud platform tool. Same way VMC on Azure. That means it's a hybrid cloud platform for VMware Cloud to Azure. Okay, that's how they are enhanced their versions. Now they are trying to enter into the multi-cloud environments as well. Let's understand what is the VMware vision. Okay, what their main goal is the first started with the managed vCenter, then STDC, hybrid cloud. Uh, so we have three. Now the latest one is hyperscalers. Hyperscalers means same like public cloud. They are also entering to the public cloud environment. So one management plane, one buying experience and subscription. They are also changing their licensing mechanism to based on the recent market research. They also upgraded to the current licensing models, which is subscription. OK, so now understand what if you could have a cloud benefits on on prem just now we observe the differences of a difference between the on prem benefits on prem advantages and also we were validated the public cloud benefits now let's try to understand what if you could have a cloud benefits on on premises okay sorry for the typo it's on prem prem sorry for the typo and if you could have a, a benefit same benefits on a public cloud, what will happen is normally in a private cloud and on premises, we have data security, data confidentiality, pre predictable cost, low latency, data control and high performance. If you plan to do cloud benefits needed on on prem, whatever benefits you have, we have in a public cloud, all benefits comes in a private cloud also or on premises as well. So flexible consumption, minimal maintenance, built in resilience, developer agility, manage from anywhere. OK, so this is the key point to understand our VMware vSphere Plus and vSAN Plus. OK, so what if customer want to get cloud benefits on on premises? So that's where they started introducing the new product that is called VMware vSphere Plus and vSAN Plus solution overview. So now let's introduce the new solution. VMware launched recently only VMware vSphere Plus and VMware vSAN plus if you see that actual definition for these products are delivering benefits of cloud benefits of the cloud to on premises workloads so benefits of the cloud means first of all we should know what is the benefits of private cloud what is the benefits of public cloud and on premises workloads we should also know what is workload so that is the reason first we talk about the benefits of workload um, and also what is workload? What is the benefit of private cloud, public cloud? We just talk about those points. Now you can understand what is importance of vSphere Plus and vSAN Plus means delivering benefits of the cloud to on-premises workloads. OK, so that main benefits are the solution overview is highlighted in three points here. Supercharge productivity with admin services. So admin services is the keyword. Enhance operational efficiency through a central cloud console. This cloud console, I will explain in detail in the next session. Just understand that they are also providing a cloud console, central cloud console. Same like AWS cloud also have a one console, Azure cloud have one console. Similarly, VMware also introducing a central cloud console. And accelerate innovation with developer services, even Innovation is implemented on developer level. So that means transforming the existing virtual infrastructure into enterprise ready Kubernetes platform. So normally Kubernetes is open source, but in the production environment, it's recommended to choose enterprise ready infrastructure. So enterprise ready Kubernetes platform is nothing but a VMware Tanjung. OK, and transform on premises infrastructure with cloud integration, even cloud integration also one of the key. So if you want to connect on premises to any of the public cloud, so we have to use this product. So quickly upgrade to the cloud benefits for on prem workloads without disruption. OK, this is the overview of vSphere Plus and vSAN Plus. OK, now let's understand is vSphere Plus a new edition of vSphere? This is when we say vSphere Plus, everyone uh, everyone start asking this question. Uh, is vSphere Plus a new edition of vSphere? 
So let's try to understand what is vSphere Plus mean. So vSphere Plus is a new subscription based offering that consists of both on premises and cloud components because our current market already mixed in environment. Most of the organization in organizations are on their transmission journey to the cloud experience. So few organizations move to private, few organizations move to the public, and some of the organizations already started using hybrid cloud services, and some organizations started using multi-cloud as well. So in, in short form, we can say all the customers are on their transformational journey to the cloud. So to convey or to convince those customers to address those customer challenges only, VMware also started introducing the product that is vSphere Plus. So in short, we call it as vSphere is a new subscription based. See, now we are familiar with this word. What is the meaning of subscription based offering? Subscription based offering means whatever the consumption or we are using for monthly, like pay as you go model only, we are paying to the VMware. Okay, is a new subscription based offering that consists of both on prem and cloud. It's not only for on-prem. If you have a vSphere Plus license, that one we can use on both on-prem and cloud as well. So cloud components that interact with each other. Okay, and another key point is the on-premises components include cloud gateway. So normally in our normal uh, workstation, like our laptop, if you want to connect your internet, normally we need to provide IP address, subnet mask and gateway. And gateway is mainly to connect to the external network. Same way, if you are on-premises network, if you want to access our VMware central cloud console also, it requires a cloud gateway. That's why I highlighted here, cloud gateway, vCenter instance and ES Access. So what they are providing with this vSphere Plus is they are providing one additional component that is cloud console. Okay, cloud console, the back end, the main component is cloud gateway only. And the cloud components includes, yeah, the cloud components include cloud services for admin, like IT operations and developers, like de development and operations DevOps that argument and enhance on-premises capabilities all accessible within VMware Cloud Console. Okay, and the cloud gateway, the cloud gateway is the key point here. Cloud gateway connect our vCenter instances to the VMware Cloud Console. That means, you know, within our on-premises, we need to create one VM. That VM is Cloud Gateway VM. This Cloud Gateway VM only, it will help you to connect to the Cloud Console. Reason is, normally in our vCenter server, it, there is no proxy setting to connect to the internet or we until unless our network team allow a proxy. So, to avoid that situation, what VMware introduced is when you have vSphere Plus license, the condition is we have to deploy within our own premises, we have to deploy one VM. That VM is a cloud gateway VM. This cloud gateway VM will help us to connect to the cloud console where we can centrally manage on premises infrastructure and access cloud services all cloud services we can access those cloud services only we mentioned here as admin services developer services admin services means it operations developer services means devops so development and operations and add-on services even if you want to add your add-on services that add-on services is nothing but a vsan plus Okay, and within our on premises, we already know. If you see here, vCenter server, we have and to manage multiple ES Access host and virtual machine. And this is a new icon for vSphere Plus. Okay, and within our vSphere, normally we have traditional applications, modern application, which is Kubernetes container based applications, and AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and high performance computing applications, and all we can run on your vSphere and real-time application, bare metal workload, compute memory, intensive apps. These are all workloads. If you want to connect to your public, only thing is we need to configure Cloud Gateway. Once that Cloud Gateway is installed on your on-premises, this Cloud Gateway will connect to Cloud Console. From the Cloud Console, you can access on-premises infrastructure, access the all external cloud services. That is the importance. Now, let's uh, talk about what is a vSphere Plus simplified license model. So this license model we can discuss. Simplified means already they make it as a very uh, simplified manner. The first one is before vSphere Plus. So that is a meaning prior to means before. So before vSphere Plus, 
two separate purchases of perpetual licenses. That means permanent licenses plus annual support and maintenance payment. We need to pay three times. One for a license, individual license. We center licensed, for instance, ESXi licensed per CPU. So we need to buy two separate licenses as well as we need to buy a license for annual support and maintenance payment. So this is the before vSphere Plus. But after vSphere Plus, what is the introduction? Introducing the vSphere Plus, uh, one benefit is one purchase of on all in inclusive subscription see whatever i highlighted here this information i collected from vmware website so as per the official vmware website what they are saying is vspear plus license within one purchase you will have all this combination of license see one license it have a vspear enterprise plus vcenter life cycle that means lcm and cloud services even it's have a integration of cloud services and a single sku sku means it's nothing but a stock keeping unit so single stock keeping unit to purchase and it includes Tanju standard runtime and Tanju mission control essentials. And essential here, they put one condition. That condition is in future in integration with hybrid cloud services in development. That means maybe in the within few days, uh, not uh, days, within uh, next future release, our vSphere Plus will also start compatible with uh, compatible with the hybrid clouds. Hybrid cloud means VMC on AWS, VMC on Azure, VMC on Google Cloud Engine. Those products still in the development stage and deploy as many vCenters as you need. So earlier, if you want one vCenter, one license. But if you have a vSphere Plus license, there is no limit for the vCenters. You can deploy multiple vCenters. Suppose if your organization is multinational company, your organization have 44 branches across the globe. During that scenario, each location, we need a one vCenter. So we no need to buy 44 licenses. If you have one vSphere Plus license, it's easy to provision. Each branch, you can configure one vCenter center but all this v center centrally you can manage using vSphere cloud console okay that is the importance of new solution vSphere plus now and license also licensed per core model only okay now we'll trying to compare some more points with vSphere see what is the comparison between vSphere and vSphere plus so earlier we have a vSphere standard. Normally in a standard, what we can do is standard, the benefit is it will provide a server consolidation. Whatever physical servers you have, all those physical servers we can consolidate into virtual machine. That process is nothing but a server consolidation and business feature proofing within the vSphere standard. But when it comes to Enterprise Plus, there is a, some additional features which includes resource management like DRS and simplified lifecycle management, LCM, intrinsic security and resiliency and performance for enhanced applications. So these are all the benefits we can get when you have a Enterprise Plus license. Now the latest solution is vSphere Plus. With this vSphere Plus solution, what it will do is transform on-premises infrastructure with vSphere Plus cloud integration. This is the benefit of vSphere Plus. And accelerate innovation with vSphere Plus developer services. That means DevOps services. And supercharge productivity with vSphere Plus admin services. That means IT operations. So let me show you some more deep dive comparison between vSphere and vSphere Plus now. See, in the consumption model, so now we are familiar with consumption model. See, previous peer is like a perpetual license. That means one-time purchase, it's a fixed permanent license. And support also, service and support also we have to buy. But in vSphere Plus, it's a flexible pay as you grow subscription. So now we are familiar for this technology. Pay as you go or pay as you grow subscription. And license management, separate license keys for vCenter and ESXi, but in vSphere Plus, it's a keyless entitlement. So we no need keyless. And availability of new features every six months, and here new features are monthly wise. And vCenter server upgrades, multiple lifecycle mechanism, but here is a centralized upgrades and version reporting. Even if you have a multiple vCenters, we can do one single console, we can perform all the centralized upgrades. And create a VM provision from vCenters, but here provision from cons cloud console to any vCenter. That is a benefit of vSphere Plus. And view inventory, separate inventory viewable from each vCenter. So each vCenter, we can use separate vCenter, but here consolidated view across 
uh, uh, all v centers suppose normally in our vSphere editions we have a also feature called linked mode and enhanced linked mode but we do not have a cloud integration facility in enhanced linked mode but in comes to vSphere plus we can centrally manage multiple vCenters as well as we also have a cloud integration facility and security intrinsic built-in security and here intrinsic security plus central security health check and to monitor alerts and events so separate view from each v center but here is a consolidated view across all v center servers and modern applications it supported vSphere is supported for a tanju basic add-on but here is like includes tanju standard runtime TMC essential. TMC means Tanju machine control. That is an advanced product also available. And so support experience, it's a traditional model, but in the vSphere plus accelerated diagnostics, it's a very speed diagnostic mechanism. Okay. And, and also we have some more additional comparison between vSphere and vSphere plus. As I mentioned, we have a, so many IT admin services like cloud services available only in vSphere plus. It's not available in vSphere editions. Global inventory service, event view, and also security health check service that is also available in vSphere plus. VM provisioning service. Provisioning service normally in vCenter we can deploy from template or create manually, but provisioning service means it's kind of yeah, automatic. Create provision VMs from VMware Cloud Console within any managed cluster and lifecycle management service. This is also automated feature compared to vSphere. It's like manual. Here is like a enhanced LCM and the configuration of management service also available in vSphere plus. And another benefit when it comes to the DevOps perspective, like development and operations, developer services, these are all available in vSphere Plus. And vSphere also have some additional separate license, vSphere with the Tanju. When you have a separate Tanju license, you can use TKG service. But if you have vSphere Plus, it's available TKG service. And the TKG Tanju integrated services, Tanju mission control. Mission control is like a same like how we are managing multiple ESX using vCenter. Same way, if you want to manage multiple TKG, Tanju Kubernetes clusters, we need a centralized management tool that is called TMC, Tanju Mission Control. It's a similar like vCenter. See, so pro provides globally visible across your entire Kubernetes footprint and automates operational tasks as tasks such as lifecycle. Okay, same like how ESX to vCenter, vCenter is management tool and same Tanju Kubernetes cluster, TMC is the management tool. And vSphere pod service, this pod service is only available with vSphere request VMware NSXT with the Tanju license. And vSphere plus is by default it's providing. Okay, this is the importance of difference between vSphere editions and vSphere plus editions. And still there will be some frequently asked questions when we are start introducing a vSphere plus with your customers. So most common questions I'm just trying to highlight here. So is vSphere plus a SaaS offering? SaaS means software as a service offering. Yes, vSphere Plus includes cloud services that delivers as a software as a service. Our VC, vCenter instance and ESX host remain on premises. That is the condition. And another question is, are there special hardware requirements to run vSphere Plus? So there are no special hardware requirements for vSphere Plus beyond the basic vSphere requirements. And the third question is, what new tools do we need to learn? Suppose if I want to update my skill set, what is the new tools? The only additional tool needed to unlock vSphere Plus benefits is the VMware Cloud Console accessible through a web browser. So we have to understand the Cloud Console navigation and concepts. That is only the new tool we need to learn. And fourth point, what type of workloads do vSphere Plus support? So vSphere Plus support, the main workloads are traditional workloads based on VMs plus modern workloads based on containers. So there is no difference between vSphere plus and vSphere in type of workloads support. Man. Support. Okay. So whatever workloads we discussed earlier, all the workloads vSphere plus also support. Okay. So that's it for today. So hope you understand the new solution from the vSphere, vSphere plus. Okay. So thank you. Thanks for your time. Please do view like share and subscribe to my channel grand cloud garage bye for now